creative writing and overview, the reason I said overview is it really is a scam. People spend their life learning how to be a good creative writer. Um, but you get maybe a little idea of what we're going to do or what you could do with the books or with other courses. This is uh, me. That's my website. All the writers now, all the publishers want us to have websites, Facebook, Twitter. Um, just like the American election, that's, that's how you get your name out there, supposedly. I can't think of anything to tweet or to put on Facebook, but I'm there if you want to go there to find me. My uh, route to being a writer was not a straight one, and I don't know many writers who got there, woke up in the crib and said, I'm going to be a writer and became one. Most people had another job, had another life. That's probably a good thing, gives you something to write about. Um, I went actually into forestry, and then English, and then law, and then I worked as a lawyer, and then um, slowly started writing at lunch in the Devonian Gardens, <laughs> and slowly having that take over my life. And then I went back and did a, a master's in creative writing, which you don't need to be a writer oh, you have to go back and do that. What is creative writing? I thought someone might ask this, and it's the scariest question, one of the scariest questions. Usually we define it by what it isn't. It isn't an annual report. It isn't uh, notes from a meeting. But those things would benefit if you knew some creative writing. Those little skills. It's not that you would fictionalize things, but knowing how to create a picture or how to engage people is good for any kind of writing. Um, what creative writing is, is using figurative language and images and pictures, and that makes it sound way harder than it is. Trying to draw on the senses and emotions of your reader. And you could find it in things like this, although you could find it anywhere, but mostly we think of it in novels, novellas, short stories. What's popular now is a really short story called a postcard story. And if you were thinking of creative writing, that's something you'd probably do in a creative writing class. It's really fun, maybe three to 500 words. Not scary like writing a novel. Nonfiction, memoir, essay. What I didn't put in there is travel writing. There's a great travel writer who is writing creative travel writing, uh, Marcello De Cintio in the city. He was the university's writer in residence last round. But. It's not creative writing to write a, uh, something for the Herald that says, where's the best place to stay in Cancun. Poetry, probably everybody thinks of that as creative writing. And now it's popular uh, in creative writing and creative writing courses is all these hybrid forms. So poetic prose. Some people might say, I write poetic prose. That's a combination. Um, there's also things like novels that contain both fiction and nonfiction. Where do writers get their ideas? I get asked this a lot at uh, book clubs. Most ideas come from some sort of life experience, even in fiction. And then you do a thing, I think Margaret Atwood calls it disassociation, and you make it something new, something with your imagination, although it starts from a kernel that was you. Day-to-day -day observations, so you're on the C train, somebody comes in across from you, and you think, wow, well, I wonder where they just came from or you're working on a piece and you need your character to date a different woman and a woman gets on the C train and you think, there she is, and then you put her into your, what you know of her, which is nothing, but maybe what she looks like, into your piece and build her. Eavesdropping, that's my favorite. You're at the coffee shop and someone's having a fight or something and then they leave and you think, well, there's a story. What happens when they get home? And reading. So reading great fiction or nonfiction, it's always good. Reading the newspaper, lots of writing instructors use that as a prompt for exercises. I put down utter fabrication, but like I started saying, I think they all come from, all your ideas come from some part of you. And so there are lots of people, including me, who would say there's probably no such thing as utter fabrication. There's some little kernel somewhere that you saw sometime in your life. After you uh, have your idea, a lot of people have ideas, but most of them don't write them down, and that's when you become the writer. You have to figure out a way to get the pen on the paper or your hands on the keyboard. 
one way for lots of writing courses that you'll go in. Alexander Writer Center teaches a course just on this is free fall. And that's all about shutting down your, probably get the wrong brain here, shutting down your left brain and getting your right brain going. So your internal editor, your grade 10 English teacher, all those people, you, you know, <laughs> are gone and you just write. You saw those people having the argument at um, Starbucks or whatever, you go home and you start writing a scene and it doesn't matter where it goes, you just keep writing or typing. And often there's a lot of junk there, but in the middle or near the end, something great happens. There's another idea comes out of it. That's maybe where people get the idea of utter fabrication. All of a sudden those people are taking care of a sick dog or something like this, you know, that, that you thought, whoa, where did that come from? And that's where the really, I think, fun part of creative writing comes in. That's not for everybody. It's good, I think, for everybody to try it. Some people have to do more of a structured route. Some people need an outline. For certain styles of writing, like um, mystery, uh, where things have to mesh together perfectly. There are people reading that book to make sure every little goblet was put back on the mantle properly and this person went there and stuff. You have to have a very intricate outline. For maybe a novel, everything has to work together, but you have a little more freedom with how you're going to end things and who's central to your story. This, this is work. This is what surprises people in writing classes, that you have to actually do, do some work and do the writing. There's strategies. One strategy that's common in writing classes is they say B-I-C, bum in chair. <laughs> so get your bum in a chair and that helps you write. Having said that, I write a lot in my car, on my laptop, waiting for various things or, <laughs> you know, when you have a meeting and then a half hour and then another meeting. I wrote a whole book watching my kids' swimming lessons. So you have, I think you also have to be flexible where your chair is. <coughs> and then there's um, regimented people who say, every day I will write for 10 minutes. It's, it doesn't have to be a lot, right, if you do it every day. If you, if you say even five minutes, you often end up writing for 20 or 25. But if they set a time limit, or time minimum, that gets the words on the page. And there's other people who set a word limit. There's people, um, John Irving is one of them, who write like a page a day. But they write every day. So you gotta do the writing. And that's not the biggest part. The biggest part is rewriting. And that is, I just wrote it a bunch of times. That's the bulk of what writers do. Rewriting, crafting. What are we crafting for? We're crafting for uh, this slide, which is like um, the gold brick in the suitcase of slides. This is like a whole course. This is a decades of, of work that I've stuffed into one slide here. But this is what the key elements are of a story. And when you write, you're going to be good at some things, naturally. I'm good at uh, dialogue, writing dialogue. I lean heavily on it in all my writing. I'm not so good at setting. I have to think hard. What do I need in the setting? Uh, what's important? Uh, I make it too short all the time. I put characters first. I think that's the most important thing. And what I've seen is if you have a good character, you can muck up a few other things <laughs> and you know, limp by and your book will still be okay. People will still read it because they're interested in the character. The character doesn't have to be crazy out there or anything. They just have to have something that people identify with or are interested in. Setting, uh, you probably know this from grade school, can be really important. It can be the character. You're climbing Mount Everest. Or it can be minimal. Waiting for Godot, something like that. But you have to have control of it. You ca can't be like me and not put it in because you're not really sure how to deal with it. You have to work at it and then say, I made it lighter because it's not that important. Took place in a classroom. Classrooms are kind of the same. I just need a few details. Something like that. POV is point of view. And that, uh, I edit um, people's books and stories. That's where I find lots of errors not errors, uh, glitches. 
that's who's telling the story. So uh, you're the writer, you're not the narrator. Stories also have a narrator. You were telling a story about kids in a playground. Who's telling the story? Is it a teacher? Is it a kid on the swing? Often it's an observer character that tells stories. Or is it from the first person point of view of a kid who's being bullied right on the playground? Or of the bully? So lots of new writers start off just, just telling the story, and that's good. You get it all down. You do the right. On the rewrite, you have to think about, OK, if this is a teacher telling the story, how does she know what happened at that kid's home? How did I put that in, you know, what they got dressed in, when the teacher wouldn't have been at the home? All those little considerations. Structure and plot is how you organize whatever's happening in your story. Something has to happen for it to be a story. If you're just saying what someone looks like, that's a description. It's not a story. It could be really good, and it could be creative. Not a story. It can be small. It can be a hint that something might happen, or a hint that maybe something didn't happen. It can be that small, but there has to be an element of that. And when you do the craft, do the art on your writing, you're thinking, well, do I? This was the outcome. Should it be at the end? Maybe it should be at the beginning, and then the story's about how we arrived at that outcome. Very traditional stories will go that arc that you might know, the story arcs. It'll be incident, 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 and then a little resolution at the end. That works, but there's lots of other ways to write stories as well. And then imagery, that same figurative language, what people read for that makes them go, oh, wow. I know that, or exactly. I've had that feeling. So rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. I think I've said it about 15 times now. That would be about right before you try and send it to a publisher.